Hello, welcome back to a, another story of the week. Uh, this one, uh, not really too funny compared to the other ones, but uh, more a story then about how I got in to um, working at uh, gyms or teaching yoga, teaching Pilates, uh, kind of where I am now. And that would begin... Uh, a long way back to kind of almost uh, primary school. So uh, quite a difficult one this to talk about. I remember um, I, I almost would say I, I, I never spoke too much to my own mum or dad about this then. Uh, and even at the time during school, I... Uh, I kept most things to myself then, kind of what was going on. Well, anyway, back in my childhood, um, I did have, up until the age of 21, when I then kind of sought to correct and pay to have them fixed then, I, um, my, my, um, my ears would, uh, stick out, like, horizontal, uh, and uh, you, you may know someone that has that. Uh, your own child may have that. It's not a problem, uh, you know. But I, at school, uh, was getting picked on. Primary school. Uh, all those years. Year one to year six then. For that reason. And uh, I also, uh, during school... Um, would struggle to pronounce an S. So any any words then with an S, uh, I slightly still believe I have a lisp now. People will tell me I don't, but um, I can hear it. I've got to really pronounce my words as carefully as I can whenever I talk then, uh, aware of an S basically. So at school, I would get picked on during the times it was um, read out loud time. So the teacher would say, uh, Gareth, read out loud, pages blah, 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 to pages so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, oh, I hated it. Because then in those classes at the school I went then, uh, year one and year six, um, all of those classrooms were mixed. So you had older kids in with the younger kids basically so if i was in year if i was in year two there would be year three in that group if i was in year four there'd be year five so i always had growing up these older just by one year but i think back then a big difference so every time it was my turn to read out loud uh i'd have a group of these boys then uh purposely mimic how i am slurring my words then the s words i had to read out kind of under their breath and i always remember the teacher never really did anything you know i just had to keep on reading and i was well aware um of all of them yeah taking the mick i'd have that at the playground uh break in the morning lunch at we have lunchtime the lunchtime break if i have to bump into them They'd all, like, say something in a group. Uh, if they felt I was ignoring that, well, then they'd go for mimicking my ears, kind of pulling their own ears out to the sides, etc. So that's kind of it. You know, good God, I could go on. There's loads of accounts that happened. Uh, I'd come home most days. I would probably bottle it as much as I could, but then there'd be sometimes I can remember I would be in tears, and then my parents would probe and probe enough until I finally could come out and say it. Um, it's hard. It's hard to, like, tell my parents what was going on. Um, I don't know the reasons why anymore. I've got my own kids now, and uh, you know, I'd like to think they can tell me anything. But I do see there's times my own kids, when they are upset, they struggle to kind of fight back their own emotions, their tears, to actually get the words out. So I 
basically did all of that year one to year six. Uh, no answer for what they were doing, nothing at all, no fight in me, and never said anything back. Uh, I just close up, take it. It would hurt on the inside, but I'd always try my very best not to look upset to them on the outside then. So if they were the older year, where I lived in my area, there was then a seven and eight year, but that was in a different location, up in a different village, just up the road. So then I did year six, obviously the older ones have moved up to that different location. So year six was nice, good, fine, they're gone. There's only that group of boys that are older than me that would do it. My own friends wouldn't do it. Uh, and when I moved up, of course, so when they were year eight, I was year seven. And then oh, you know, I had that year again, whilst I was in year seven, I would just try my best to avoid them. And then year nine, 10 and 11, you go to another location and let's have a think about this now my year nine and their year 10 i think that's what it is i think i'm year nine and that summer i know i'm going into year nine i can't think exactly the timeline of this i don't know when but at some point maybe during the summer or maybe he always did. My dad uh, would always show me those uh, Rocky movies. I had all of them on like VHS tape. He had tape recorded them then off the TV. And uh, it started to have me in my own kind of back garden. I had my own kind of little gym workout, like little routine. Uh, I had a punch bag. My dad got me a punch bag. Uh, we had some sort of like wooden pole extending off of a tree, uh, which was kind of like a pull-up type bar, uh, push-ups and stuff. So I think basically, almost watching Rocky IV, when he's out in Russia, he's training outdoors, well, me and my, well, how old am I? 14, it's about 14, 15 perhaps, okay? And naturally at that age as well, I am changing. Uh, physically, I'm just naturally building a bit of a chest, some shoulders really, compared to the other kids. But it didn't make me confident. I'm still not confident, okay? I'm not uh, big headed or anything, but I'm just aware. That was it. My own friend was saying, like, you know, wow, you've got quite a good frame and a good figure, which then made me seek for more. So then I'm sure my dad used to have dumbbells lying around and barbells then. So I started taking them into my room and I would uh, have my Rocky movies on, uh, my little VHS tapes, and uh, I'd fast forward to the training montages. And uh, so as I'm watching those, oh, I'm there kind of just lifting some weights. And then... It started to get quite serious, actually. I started to actually then buy, like, muscle magazines, and uh, that's where I actually learnt about doing actual reps and sets and uh, actual correct exercises, you know, bicep curls, uh, bench pressing. That was it, my Christmas list at that year. My Christmas list at that age was a bench press. I wanted a bench press in my room. So all of that... Uh, a multi-gym, so the multi-gym where you kind of have the, the lat pull down, the seated row, the chest press machine. I had all of it. And uh, you know, I'm doing routines. Uh, I'm splitting my body parts up, uh, like chest one day, the next day is back, the next day is arms, the next day I'm doing some leg exercises. I'll tell you some, I wasn't much of a fan of legs really. Um, I can't now remember Either that went on until the end of year 10. I'm just training, going about my own business at school, still getting picked on now and then when they're all in a group. All this happens when I'm in year nine at the end. 
Either way, then, what has happened, uh, on this day that I am talking about, there was meant to be, uh, so either year nine, myself and my friends, v year 10. Do you know, for the sake of a story, let's just say it is, let's say it is year nine versus year 10, a football match at the field. And that was it. At the time, there was a computer game called Red Card Football, an anything goes football game on the PlayStation 2. And that's what the game was. And I, again, being actually quite timid, didn't even get involved. I didn't even play that match. I just stood on the side watching my friends go against that older group that have always kind of picked and bullied on me. The match came to an end. And at the end of this match then, uh, the older kids for year 10s then have kind of all charged and attempted to tackle all of us. This one year 10 has attempted to tackle me um, and I've pretty much just stood still. He's just kind of gone to almost rugby tackle me, but I've not moved. And then, but in this moment, I think because it's the first time I physically have had one of them touch me, I think then also in all the years, I had this almost incredible Hulk-like moment where I've almost just in my head paused and said, no. And I, it's come out of me. There's six more than six years, isn't it? Whatever years that was getting picked on has come out on the one child first. I've like grabbed him and thrown him whilst I like talking in some big, you know, voice. Don't know what I said, but it's a, you know, you could tell, wow, I'm, I'm kind of almost roaring at this point. I'm angry. And that's then caused more of them to then get involved. And I've got more of them getting involved. Now, this sounds really far-fetched, what I'm about to say. Um, I always kind of almost cringe when my friends retell it back to me. God, remember that day this happened? We'll do it short and quick, because it sounds so ridiculous. But basically, there would have been a point. I'm almost dogpiled. There's loads of them. Uh, they're all around me. I'm on the floor. I'm getting kicked and punched and repeatedly just kind of jumped on. But then no matter how many times I'm getting picked and punched on, I think somehow just the amount of sheer, I don't know what it is. Is it rage? Is it adrenaline? Is it just anger for all of them? I just keep getting up. And then imagine I get up. I swing at one. One would get a bit of a bloodied nose. He's kind of off. He's gone. They'd obviously all get me down again. Another kind of pummeling, in, kicking and punching. But again, that just that anger, that just built up pent rage. I just keep getting up. I try to swing, get a few more. Until finally that was broken up. But just how it looked to others watching. After that day, I've kind of been tarred then with the reputation of being a bit of a hard kid, which I am still timid after that day. I still don't want to get in trouble. And then being labelled as a kind of hard kid at that age, I then kind of just felt this weight on me. Oh, God. I'm almost a target for the other hard kids, if that makes sense, which I didn't want to be. But at that point now, I am... Um, even more focused and driven into my weightlifting at home then. I'd go home from school, get home at 4pm. I'm now even taking all these bloody protein shakes and like creatine and all sorts. And uh, I'm just like 15, 14, 15. Uh, I was just hell bent on just making my, that was it. That was, that was the goal. The goal wasn't to get any stronger, to get into fights. The goal was to try to look as strong as you can, just to deter anyone from wanting to have a fight. I didn't like when I got angry. When I got angry, it was horrible. I really would change to the point I'm almost not there. It's not me. It's like this weird blackout, just that amount of anger towards those that kind of, yeah, did me wrong all of those years. I did kind of get my, um, do I call it revenge? I guess revenge on all of them, singly. What I would do, 
And I will tell you this. They did. I, yeah, they did. They did deserve this. So they would still try to call me names and make me upset when they were in their group. So if I saw them down a corridor or I accidentally kind of went into a... Remember at school, there would be like certain toilets. You might think, oh, don't go in that toilet because so-and-so could be there. That year group could be there in there smoking and stuff. Well, now and then I would do that and yeah, they would be in there. I would have to hear all the bloody words again. And of course, knowing... Uh, do you know what? Even though I had that big fight in the past, and I obviously didn't win, did I? But I thought it's about picking the right time, isn't it? So I'd remember all of them who was in the group. And then over now the years, whilst they were still at that school then, until they would have moved on, wouldn't they? When I was in year 11, they would have gone. But all those years then, oh, it was good. It was brilliant. If I ever walked in to a toilet then and there's only one of them or even two of them i always knew i could have two if there was one on their own especially though without any warning you know they could have been in that group mouthing off at me two weeks ago but i again won't forget that they might forget it so then to their shock they're on their own in the flipping toilets and that is it. I've got them. I have got them. Not like beating them up, but I've grabbed them, threatening them, hands on neck. And you can just see the absolute tears, like fear in their eyes. And there's a big apology from them each time I do it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I won't do it again. I won't do it again. So over time, I did gradually pick each one off. But they'd still do it in the group, which is so infuriating. So that's how I kind of got into the whole wanting to lift weights and I kind of became aware of um, weightlifting. So I think that has a big reason for how I then kind of got into this industry. I would have then left uh, year 11, went to sixth form, did an A-level in art. Uh, I got the A, but then did nothing with it. And about what, 18, 19, uh, became a personal trainer. Just, you know, the two went hand in hand. Um, and that then led to me working on the cruise ship. Uh, to get on the cruise ship, I had to learn yoga pilates, did all those courses. So, um, in a, in a, in a, can you say that? In a weird way, my childhood, myself getting bullied, I guess led to where I uh, <laughs> am now. Before I end this, right, this is the weird, this is, this is the worst thing. Going back to that, being labelled one of the hard kids in school, um, which I never wanted. Wanted to be left alone. I'll make that clear. I wanted to be left alone. But in my own friends, in my own group, because um, I'm labelled as the hard, oh, that sounds so ridiculous when we keep saying it. As I'm labelled, yeah, you know, the, the, the harder kid in the school, well, then it got to the point where if they saw someone in my own year group try to take the mick out of me just the one time, you know, I didn't, I didn't mind really. You know, I'd, just, I'd brush it off if it's the one time. But my friends would hear it be said in front of me and they'd all go, ooh, ooh, it's in trouble now. And it, it just led me to think, Oh, I've got to do it. And it kind of made me feel, oh, I've got to now live up to this bloody name, which I didn't want in the first place. So there's actually, sadly, um, some people uh, back in the past then, I would have wrongfully, um, again, I've never beaten someone up, but it's just that whole, you know, almost grabbing someone Telling someone you don't like what they've said, blah, blah, blah. And I've done that to a few people because, again, my friends would have gone, oh, he's in trouble, and they expected me to do it, and I felt the pressure. Oh, God, here we go. I've got to do it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any kind of, like, meaning to that story. If you have your own children, um, I have my own children, and I really do hope if they had a problem 
you know, they'd tell me sooner than let that fester then. But at the same time, if they do it on their own, does it make them stronger? Um, it is a tough one. Yeah. Well, there you go. I think I'll wrap that up now. That is story of the week. And yes, thank you very much. Next Friday, I promise we'll do more of an upbeat, a funny story again, okay? Well, thank you for listening.